chair is authorized to declare a recess of the committee at any time. The full committee hearing is convening to review the Trump administration's response to the drug crisis. I now recognize myself for five minutes to give an opening statement. Good morning and thank all of you for being here at this very important hearing. I believe that today's hearing is one of the most critical hearings we will hold in this entire Congress. In 2017, more than 70,000, let me repeat that, 70,000 people died from drug overdoses in our country. This is the highest number we have ever had in the United States. Families across our great nation, in red states and blue states and purple states and big cities, suburbs and rural areas are struggling with the devastating consequences of this generational crisis. On our committee, our members have many differences. But I am very proud that despite our differences, we have consistently worked on a bipartisan basis to address this crisis. For example, when the commission chaired by former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie issued its uh, report back in 2017, our chairman at that time, Trey Gowdy, agreed to come to my district to hold a hearing uh, where Governor Christie gave recommendations from the commission. And I said on that day to Governor Christie, who we don't agree on a whole lot, but I said to him that, that day, I said, Governor, this is one of your finest moments. Governor Christie warned us that this crisis, and these are his words, quote, is the greatest and broadest public health ep epidemic of our lifetime, end of quote. He urged us to, quote, to rise above the partisanship that we have in our country today, end of quote. That is just what our committee has done. Last year, we wrote a bipartisan legislation to reauthorize the Office of National Drug Control Policy. We strengthened existing authorities and increased funding to help expand treatment and address emerging threats. We'd have, that would have not been possible without a key compromise that were brokered by Congressman Meadows and Congressman Connolly. In preparation for today's hearing, Ranking Member Jordan and his staff were extremely instrumental in bringing it together so that we could have an effective and efficient hearing with all of our witnesses on one panel. And Mr. Ranking Member, I thank you, and I really mean that, and I thank your staff because you all worked very hard to make that happen. In fact, our two states, Maryland and Ohio, are among the hardest hit by the drug crisis. Ohio had the second highest rate of death from drug overdoses in the entire nation. More than 5,000 people died from drug overdoses in Ohio in 2017 alone. In my home state of Maryland, we ranked seventh in the rate of drug deaths with more than 2,000 deaths from drug overdoses, including 761 in Baltimore alone. These include people like Joseph Banks. And listen to this one. Joseph Banks, a young Baltimore City police officer who died of a drug overdose just last month. Unfortunately, in contrast to our bipartisan urgency here in Congress, the White House office charged with leading our nation's efforts to combat the drug crisis has been missing in action as deaths continue to mount. 
there's both a leadership vacuum and a competence vacuum at the head of ONDCP. And it, it pains me to even say that, but that's what I truly believe. Under federal law, one of the most basic, important jobs of ONDCP is to issue a national drug control strategy. However, in all of 2017, the Trump administration failed to meet this most basic statutory requirement. In 2018, it was no different. No strategy was issued. Let that sink in for one moment. 70,000 people, every time I go to Raven Stadium, I look around and I think, that's a stadium that holds about 70,000 people. We lose that many people every year. So for two years, more than half of President Trump's team, term, the White House had no national drug control strategy. None. None. All while tens of thousands of people were dying, and the crisis was escalating every day. You know, we will talk a lot about deaths, but we also need to talk about not only the dead, but the living, the people who are in the pipeline for death, the people that are in so much pain, they don't even know they're in pain. So there was no sense of urgency. There was no sense of passion or purpose. <clears throat> Finally, this past January, the White House issued its long-awaited strategy. But when we got it, we could see immediately that it was no strategy at all. It was a 23-page pamphlet. It fails to meet even the most basic requirements in the law. It does. I don't think anybody in this room, we legislators, if we were presented with this, would be satisfied if our staff presented this to us. For example, it does not include detailed goals or objectives to combat the drug crisis. Today, the director of ONDCP, James Carroll, is finally, finally appearing before the committee. But it wasn't easy to get him here. Last year, I repeatedly asked for Mr. Carroll to testify before us as the acting director of ONDCP in 2018, but he refused. In January, shortly after I became chairman, I sent him a letter inviting him to testify. But we delayed the hearing to accommodate his last minute trip to China to examine issues related to opioids. However, however, after we arranged for Director Carroll to appear today, he sent a letter saying that his attendance was, quote, conditional, end of quote, on his demand to testify on his own panel without experts from the GAO. That was despite the fact that Chairman Meadows held a hearing in 2015 with the previous head of ONDCP and GAO, both on the same panel. A few days after that, Mr. Carroll sent another letter asking for yet another delay. Mr. Carroll, I must tell you that I, I at least wonder whether your priorities might be misplaced. Think about all those days and weeks and months you spent avoiding and delaying today's hearing, trying to fight us with regard to your appearance. That was a waste of everybody's time. And one thing I'll say to this committee, I want to be clear, I'm not wasting your time. Life is short. And we want to be effective and efficient in what we do. So all the while, you could have been focused on developing a real strategy with concrete goals and measurable outcomes. You could have been focused on complying with the 
law that the Congress, that we passed, <coughs> you could have been focused on saving the lives of tens of thousands of your fellow Americans. But you squandered that opportunity. Those days are lost forever. Just like the tens of thousands of our friends, our colleagues, our children, and our family members. So more than 190, more than 190 every single day have died. In fact, if today's hearing lasts for just two hours, 15 people will die while we are sitting here explaining why you had no strategy for two years and still don't really have one today. Ms. Carol, we are going to ask you some tough questions today because that is our job. And I, and I pray that we will do this in a bipartisan way. So when you respond, you have a choice to make. You can either buckle down and work with us, and so help me God, we, we want to work with you, and we're happy to do that. Uh, it's up to you. All of the members of this committee on both sides of the aisle want to work with you. We want you to be successful. It's important to us. We are your authorizing committee, and we want to collaborate to battle this crisis. We need to succeed. We have no choice. So as I close, I, I want to make it clear that I want to thank the many dedicated professionals at ONDCP who are working day in and day out to tackle this unrelenting crisis we face. And again, and I mean it from the depths of my heart, I do sincerely hope and thank the ranking member for his assistance in pulling this hearing together. He, he basically saved us uh, quite a bit of time, and we'll be able to hopefully do this in an effective and efficient manner. With that, uh, I recognize 